I think we all know that we are living through a major historical event. How, so when you're thinking about how this story is going to be told in the future, how do you go about like planning that collecting of stories? Well, you know, again, we're, we're not completely sure how that's going to look. Um, we are through right now through our website and, um, you know, we're asking people to submit stories. It's kind of interesting because this is not obviously going to be an object driven uh, unless you talk about a roll of toilet paper or uh, you know a, a hand sanitizer or something, but uh, it's it's a story driven <laughs> story driven uh, part of our history. And um, the other thing that I think, uh, as a historical society, that we can add not just for people down the line, is we can provide perspective on this how this pandemic has compared to other situations in our history. And, and for, so uh, in our next uh, news co- publication, our newsletter, uh, we're republishing a very good article that was done a number of years ago by a man on the uh, flu pandemic of 1918 and how it impacted Otter Tail County. And some of the similarities from the flu masks that they had to wear to the arguments between the mayor of Fergus Falls and the city health officer on when to close or if to close public facilities or schools. So, you know, there, there's, it's uncanny some of the similarities uh, that occurred in 1918 and is occurring now. So people, a couple of generations ago, over a hundred years ago, um, not only were they going through a world war, but they were also going through a pandemic And then for, like, people in Fergus Falls, a devastating tornado that uh, destroyed much of the community. So, you know, we can learn. And we can learn from our history. We can learn concepts. uh, Not to say, well, people responded this way in 1918. Why aren't we doing this today? Well, that's not the point. What we can do as historians is say, this is what happened. Uh, Are there things we can learn from it, because part of our mission is interpreting local history. Um, Gibson, I'm wondering if um, the historical response has been the same across the state, or if you're noticing differences when you're traveling to all of these different communities and how they're responding and maybe learning from other communities or, or not, maybe. And if you don't, no, your no, your question was good. And the reason I took a breath is because I kind of feel like we're in a taking a breath moment. The last couple of months, we have been holding our breath, just wondering what is coming next. What is that? What does that timeline look like? And now that we're starting to see a little bit uh, clearer what that picture could maybe look like, um, we're starting to exhale and make some plans and make some and move in certain directions. And so. Um, I will say that it has been great to see uh, historical societies utilizing social media to to stay connected with people. That is, um, much like Chris said, that is a form of communication that we are thankful and grateful that we have right now to utilize. Um, I've seen the collection of stories happen that way. So people are sharing um, their opinions or they're sharing their, um, you know, how they're kind of digesting what's happening on Facebook or on Instagram. Um, and something, you know, you had asked in your question, what can people do? How can people share their story? And quite honestly, it is keeping a diary, whether that is on Facebook or on Instagram, and then taking it, taking screenshots and saving it all, or if it's paper and pen, just keeping kind of a daily log of how you are reacting to things and how the world is reacting to things, because that is what's going to be really helpful as we, you know, a few years down the road, start looking at how did the the flu of 1918 and how did COVID-19, how did those compare? It's going to be those, those stories that will really paint a clearer picture for us. So, As you're doing your research, um, have you... Uh, of course, you wouldn't know this from the past, probably, but what kind of voices are commonly left out of of these stories, and how can we make sure right now that we're 
actively, for example, if someone doesn't journal, um, seeking out everybody's everybody's experience. All so we have like a collective Minnesotan experience. So uh, Amanda, the what the voices that have typically been left out or or minimized or disenfranchised in the past have been the the workers, the working class, minorities, uh, new immigrants, uh, people who um, you know do not necessarily are are have a, a, a lesser voice within the, the community in, in the past. And, and that's that's who we really need to. We need to also try to collect the stories of people who um, work at Walmart or at our uh, um, gas stations, the, the, the uh, convenience stores, the uh, nurses, um, uh, the people in the food plants uh, who have in many uh, places, you know, really been on the front line. I mean, they literally are on the front line. And so, and a lot of people in those food plants are new immigrants to our area. So uh, from, from other countries and, and uh, you know, English is a second language. And so, and, and that's the real challenge is to try to get their stories because typically we just um, aren't gonna go into their, uh, knock on their door and say, Hey, you know, write down or tell us your story. Um, they're going to, you know, be a little apprehensive about talking to us. So, developing relationship in our immigrant communities uh, to get their stories to me, I think, is is really important. What was um, I imagine? Oftentimes, too, a uh, like a farmer perspective isn't always included in things or. What what would what was that like from back in the day in the 1918s? What kind of stories have you encountered from the ag communities that were going through the flu then? Well, um, you know, uh, during the uh, pandemic, you know, of course, we were just just coming out of World War One, and and so much uh, production was geared toward the war effort you know, producing a lot of food. And uh, they were kind of entering into a period of, of uh, depressed prices. Uh, kind of, you know, they're just like there are depressed prices uh, on a lot of uh, crops and commodities today. So, um, you know, they, they're they somewhat isolated groups. You know, you have a farmer's area, a farmer there. And so it's a little more difficult, no, to, to cause they're, it's not like a union of, of people so to get their stories. I fortunately, one of my staff members, her husband is a uh, farmer. Uh, I'm, you know, third generation farmer in Ottertail County. So uh, I feel we're going to have a good perspective from there because he's been fa uh, farming his uh, family, the land for, you know, over a hundred years. So I, you know, again, I can't, you know, their stories, um, I don't have any, you know, we do have, um, this is the thing about local history is you have bits and pieces of information. You know, it, it's like uh, people want a definitive answer and it's scattered all over the place, you know, and, and which is great because we, it's not just in one book. Yeah, and I like that idea of things being scattered all over pairing with what you said earlier about how you act as the interpreters and you kind of piece things together so you can provide perspective. Right. And it's never, it's, uh, it's never easy um, because we're, you know, we're under some pressure as, as public historians to, for some people to tell the right story, yeah, the accepted story. Um, not to make waves, you know, or, or not to, so um, and history has as many, it's not black or white, but many shades of gray. And so our job is to sift through some of that because, uh, and, and to tell different stories, not just the accepted story necessarily that's in the newspaper, but the back stories. And, um, which, which is, it's challenging, but that is one of uh, the best parts of our job. I was going to say, in coming off of 
COVID-19, one of the places where a lot of sifting is going to happen that hasn't necessarily thus far is social media, is going through all of the Facebook and Instagram posts over the, you know, this period of time and pulling those local stories from there in order to do a little bit of a deeper dive. And I don't, you know, the, the flu of 1918 didn't have Facebook to go through and, and see how people were responding. Um, so that'll be a really interesting facet. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was listening to public radio this morning and they interviewed um, someone from uh, Moorhead High about how they're putting together their yearbooks and how it just looks differently because it's less about the stories of their current events throughout the year, but more about their experience being separate and going through this time. Um, and they had, they specifically said something about um, how it's different to, to talk to people at your school in real life to go and be able to encounter a number of different people every day through the hallways versus now needing to go on social media and you're not friends with everybody and you might not know how to contact everybody and so um, it just made me think even more about how to make sure that voices of people who aren't within your circles on social media are also being included in the story gathering process. And I mean, you look at your books kind of as a piece of history, as a part of the collective history, and how they're thinking about making sure that they're reaching out to all people outside of their social media bubble, too. So yeah, I think social media does have a role to play. Um, but hopefully it's a part of, you know, many, which I'm sure, sure. Yeah. it was just an interesting a thing I heard yeah. this morning. You know, Amanda, as, as, a, as an old stodger here, an old geezer, uh, such as myself, uh, having to use all this technology, uh, and, and we, we, you know, to me, it's always just been a tool. You know, I've had to use it, but now it's almost become a necessity. So the way we have been able to maintain contact with people is, you know, Facebook Live. We do a, a, a you know, history on the road through Facebook Live. Uh, you know, we've done a podcast, Quarantine History of Ottertail County. We're, we're trying, that's that, you know, since we can't act, because so much of our work is actually being face-to-face -face doing programs, uh, outreach with with. Um, groups, service groups, and community groups, and and tours, people coming in, and we can't do that now. So, you know, we've had to use uh, technology, the the digital world, the virtual world, uh, to maintain uh, contact with people. And we've, I mean, in a way, we we've, we've done more now, forced us to do more with that than ever before, and probably ramped up our abilities to do that. You know, I, I do, I want to say, you know, I'm reflecting on a lot of the stuff that we've discussed and something that is so different from 1918 um, to right now, 2020 COVID-19, is that around the state, we do have over 500 historical societies, cultural institutions that are representing people in stories, and they will be the stewards of these stories. And that is far greater than what, what was um, at hand in 1918. So I do think right. that, right? I guess Chris is nodding in agreement. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gibson, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, we're much better equipped to uh, tell these stories than uh, 1918. I, I think it's important to also have grace with our local history organizations as they are navigating telling the story and interpreting the story because it's happening in real time. Um, it is so unique to work in this field of, of story collecting and also be living it simultaneously. So there, um, I just, I just want to put that out there. This is, uh, it, I, I look at this as another challenge and a long line of challenges over the years that uh, we will, uh, we'll get through this because I think uh, our people and people realize the importance of telling our stories and, and how local history is important to our, to our community uh, identity. Mm -hmm.